Hey everyone, welcome back. So, I finally came back to testing this new Gyre Augment, and you probably wondered why I didn't post about it. Honestly, I still find it sucks, and hear me out. You have Cathode Current, an augment, which is basically the partially unnerfed version of Rotor Swell, allowing us a small fraction of the infinite lighting chains she had on release. These extra chains happen from everything, the only bonus requirement is killing, and it can happen at range, which is the direction that Warframe has gone over the years. This means it worked with all builds, be it weapon platform leaning on guns or melee, or DPS leaning with just a primer to direct the shocks like an epitaph. It was always useful and improved builds via ranged DPS spawning on top of enemies that can loosely stun them, allowing you to basically do AoE DPS from far away. Now, enter Coil Recharge. Here is a bug augment that entirely breaks if you have Proteus casting inverted in settings. If you intend to use Coil Recharge, make sure this is set to default. Now, this augment is rather odd. You basically get a ball that follows you around by tapping your ability again anytime after initial cast. It does not follow you around like a sentinel. Basically, imagine giving your beast companion rotor swell, except it only catches up to you when you retap the ability. Hold casting it detonates it at location. This augment makes throwing Coil Horizon a lot more aggressive and prevents you from instantly recalling or detonating. This can take getting used to, but it will always throw out about 20 meters before you're able to do anything about it. And you can also only recall it to your location once every 2 seconds, meaning the ball is basically always going to be behind you. You can use them as traps, but because you can only have one coil recharge out at a time, it will prevent you from being able to use another coil horizon besides you. Range also allows you to suck a bigger radius to drag everything in, but unfortunately range doesn't also scale up the shock radius of the ball from the augment itself. The larger radius suck makes up for it not being dynamically placeable instantly at range for DPS, which is what Cathode Current lets you do by killing enemies through shooting at range. Now, what I don't like about this augment is that it only ever catches up to you when you tap it. I personally feel the tap function should have it alternate between attaching to you and not. This allows you to not have to constantly recall it to you when you don't want to detonate, as these shocks that it can do also scale with range traveled, which would be really nice if it was stuck to me and I was bullet jumping and parkouring. This allows it to function as extra close range DPS while also retaining functionality as a suck on hold cast directly in front of you, kind of like with post pull update changes on mag, and then you will even get free extra chain damage. Or make the ball quickly travel to your reticle on cast to deal AoE electric damage instead. It should also throw the ball at the direction you aim rather than forced frontal throw. Yes, you literally still can't aim this thing for those that don't know. If you want to just use the grouping part of this ability, it's already cheap with the base kit, as the augment makes it much more awkward to use purely for grouping purposes, since it will always throw in the direction your warframe is facing and you cannot aim it up or down. Also, please let the ball recall ignore map geometry as trying to get it to you gets it stuck in doorways and walls and other clutter way too easily on hallways and smaller maps. Using it as a trap far away sort of works for crowd control but doesn't deal enough to kill and this actually annoys me because it means it does a slightly better job at locking down areas than your first ability which was its entire literal purpose except both shocks too slowly and neither have enough DPS to kill without spamming it. Basically, we get a carpal tunnel simulator ball that follows us around with more awkward grouping. For purposes of additional DPS, it does not allow you to focus on your weapon since you have to constantly recast it to catch up to you, while also not dealing enough damage to main DPS by itself without crutching on rotor swell chain lightning and cathode current bonus hits. No, the ball chain itself does not get extra hits from cathode current, only the rotor swell itself is buffed. And for grouping, as I said, the base ability is better. Thus, there are two main build directions we can go. Either open a mize, as I originally discussed with Nightmare weeks ago when I was unhappy with the augment, or buffing its raw damage with roar. Each has its pros and cons, and let's get into each. Open a mize is to substitute pillage or terrify, the main candidates for cathode current. Whereas these armor strip tools are active cast spam, cathode current's bonus effects were passive, letting you focus on only needing to cast your armor strip ability to help DPS. Cold Recharge requires constant recast of DPS by bringing it to you or grouping enemies, meaning it is much more action intensive than Cathode Current builds. It also requires higher range to account for constant repositioning, making the suck actually useful, since a cannon will yeet itself past you when you're moving, especially in the air. Therefore, we want a passive armor strip, which is where Open Amise comes in. And this has the drawback of being directional, meaning we always now have to look at enemies we want to kill, but that's not a huge drawback. 
The ball being near us to hit enemies isn't enough by itself. And the alternative is to run Roar so that you don't have to look at enemies, but this is weaker than Open Amaze. But post armor nerfs, it is a lot easier to deal with enemies when they're capped to only 2700 armor for 90% damage reduction. Regardless of choice, I still recommend running Cathode Current together with this new augment because it cannot stand on its own, and the kills resulting from your weapons or coil recharge can also proc Cathode Current too. If I'm forced to prime enemies intentionally in AoE, then the build is no different than just a normal Cathode Current Epitaph setup, which was already basically peak Gyre before. The new Augment plus Old allows me to just focus on hitting who I want with my weapons as main DPS, instead of trying to spread electric procs or priming with my weapon everywhere. So let's look at the builds. Roar and Open Amaze both work with the same setup and appreciate duration charts. Or it doesn't really matter on the setup, so use whatever you want. Because Gyre no longer has mass crowd control or shield regen from pillage or terrify, it becomes a lot more difficult to shield gate, so any enemy outside of your cold recharge radius can shoot and break shields unless you shoot them yourself. Therefore, expect higher incoming damage that poses a bigger threat compared to traditional cathode current builds. Combined with needing cathode current for coil recharge to be good and needing extra survivability plus higher range, it becomes very difficult to mod for this kind of Gyre and make coil recharge useful, but I settled for this. If you don't want to run Cathode Current, you can replace it with another survivability or duration mod for quality of life. I would strongly recommend equipping enough duration charts to reach 100 to make your open mines last 30 seconds, more leeway on Cathode Grace's initial cast window, and for your rotor swell to last 30 seconds at bonus stacks. The build looks similar to the OG Cathode Current setup, but runs Arcane Blessing for survivability instead of Energize, and dropped a tiny bit of strength for the double augment. I would not recommend Cold Recharge for Endurance setups, because it doesn't really bring enough to the table, and is actually more annoying to use than just Cathode Current alone. For energy, we will be bringing any Sentinel with the Tazacore because this allows us to proc more Chain Lightning on Gyre, as well as proc Manifold Bond easily on a triple element Tazacore build for Synth Deconstruct and free energy. I feel this kind of setup works a lot better with melee, since you'll often have Coral Recharge by your side or sucking enemies up right beside you. You can use this setup with guns too, but because it is much harder to direct Coil Horizon at range to enemies, as it always travels to you on cast and it already has suck on it by default, I would recommend gun setups to skip this augment and use Cathode Current by itself on the traditional Pillage or Terrify builds. Build Pure Electric on your melee of choice to spread Gyre Shocks more easily as well as melee influence spam. Your extra status effects from Condition Overload will come from your Tazacore Sentinel. Influence actually isn't even that needed since you have access to grouping and a ton of electric chaining already. It's just the best choice here, but options like Duplicate or Crescendo for heavy slam setups also work well, since we have access to grouping and decent ability damage. There are some melee vortex shenanigans you can do, but I would not recommend it unless you have a weapon that can proc it reliably so that you can independently suck enemies up for your two to kill without needing to detonate. And that's it for the cold recharge augment. Kind of meh, but... It works. Cheers. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'm trying my best to get new information out always, like I've been doing with the Kume updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.